awesome cave. If I was traveling with a precious treasure, I'd bury it in a place like this. For three years, I followed every move of every lead I could get uh, of the family members of Joseph. And finally today, all my work has paid off. I found a rock with the exact impression of Joseph's goblet of forgiveness in it. Normally, I wouldn't want to kiss a rock, but boy, I would want to kiss this one. I, nah, it's a little dirty, I think. But it's got to be buried in this cave here somewhere. And being the archaeologist that I am, I know I can dig it out of this cave. They don't call me digger for nothing. Wow! A treasure trunk. A family air possession. It's got to be in there. I know it is. That's funny. It doesn't have a lock on it. It's not rusted. It doesn't damage in any way. But yet that silly thing won't open. You know, I wouldn't have buried it in a treasure chest. I'd have used the treasure chest as a mark and buried it in the ground. Because I'm going to get it out there. After all, the rock I found was downstream from this waterfall. And that means the waterfall had broken it off from the other rocks with all the years of running down on it. That means it's in here somewhere with the goblet of forgiveness. I'm going to dig it out. Wait a minute. The world's got to know about this find. I'm going to have to make a phone call now. Yeah? You take a correct call? Good. Uh, could I speak to Dan Bother, please? Yeah. Hey, Dan, I'm about to make one of the world's greatest discoveries today. Yeah, Dan, you need to get your camera crew out here. Yeah, Dan, I know it's been three years. Yeah, Dan, that's a goblet of forgiveness. You still remember about it, don't you? Hey, man, don't hang up. It ain't a joke. I found hard evidence this time. Yeah, I found an exact impression of the goblet of forgiveness downstream from a waterfall. Yeah? Hey, now listen carefully so your WIXM TV crew can get you. Okay, when you get on the interstate going southbound, you're going to have to give me a call because this waterfall is not on any of the maps that I've found so far. Yeah, and then when you get here, I'll be digging a hole in front of a treasure trunk. Yeah, man, of course I try to open. What do you think, I'm stupid? Yeah, by the time you get here, I'll be spit polishing that goblet. Lavish, will you be all right while I watch the news? I want to watch Dan Bother with WIXM. You'll act in what, Miss Vicky? No, I was just asking you if you'd be all right while I watch the news. Oh, yes. I won't put any of these beads in my mouth. I promise. Welcome to the afternoon news with Dan Bother. Get the latest breaking news here on WIXM, where I ask them, then I tell you what they said. An incredible story is unfolding today in a cave. Not a dark, gloomy mine, but a cave with brightly colored rocks. Inside, you find the famous archaeologist Digger Lauren. What is a South African archaeologist doing here in a cave? How did Digger find this cave? After all, it was hidden behind a waterfall, a waterfall that we could not find on any maps. What led him here? Three years of research, his Bible, and one, yes, one rock. A rock with a deep impression left in its center. An impression of a goblet, a cup fit for a king. Digger believes the goblet belonged to a man named Joseph. We brought in our courtroom sketch artist to give you the rest of the headline news about Joseph, the goblet, and Digger. Since Joseph lived in a time where there was no radio, PC, cable, remote controls, or television, hmm, I would have been without a job. <coughs> Excuse me. We bring you the artist sketches instead of on the scene footage. My son's bedtime storybook provides us with the audio. Joseph was given a coat of many colors from his dad. His brothers were jealous and his dreams made them mad. In a pit, Joseph waited as his brothers potted his cell. They blooded Joseph's coat and decided not to tell. Too bad they didn't have DNA testing back in those days. Joseph became a servant, respected for being loyal. Those dreams gave him a position both cool and royal. We stored food for this family which has come to our land. Feed all who is hungry. This is a demand. Till one day his family needed this food and some grain. They knelt at his royalty. They knew not his name. Joseph's face they knew not as they packed to go. 
and their grain, a royal goblet, was brought out to show. Bring back Brother Benjamin and your father, now up in years. Joseph said, remember that pit and his tears. They were reunited. This is love at its best. Joseph served them from his goblet of forgiveness. Our camera crew takes you live to the dig where the famous archaeologist Digger Lorne is digging a huge hole in the cave floor located just behind the waterfall. Discovering the goblet would astound the Christian community. Notice from these shots that the cave... Lavish! Lavish, there is a man named Digger digging a huge hole in a cave floor. I can't believe it, but there's a hole in my beads box. Is that a tree I see in that cave where the huge hole is dug? I can't believe it. Is that a multicolored bead I see in my beads box? Is that a bird's nest I see in that tree in that cave where the huge hole is dug? I can't believe it. I found several multicolored beads. Is that a blue feather I see sticking out of the nest in that tree in that cave where the huge hole is dug? Lavage, drop what you're doing. I can't believe it, but okay. Lavish, we got to go right now. Where are we going? We're going behind the waterfall. Lavish, don't get dirty. Look at this cave. It is filthy. Look at this big. This looks like a volcano, but it's a big hole. And it's in our cave. Mister, didn't your mother ever tell you not to dig holes in the yard? What do you think you're doing? Hello up there. I'm an archaeologist. My name is Digger. Who are you? I'm Lavish, and this is Miss Vicky. I'm a beadiologist. A beadiologist? I dig for beads. Digger, have you found any archies in there? Nah, I'm digging for the goblet. It's called the Goblet of Forgiveness. <laughs> well, you'd better dig a little deeper, because if you think you're going to find forgiveness in this cave, you're going to have to dig pretty deep for it. I found evidence that led me here, so I'm not going anywhere until I find that goblet. Well, how about if you and I take a trip to the china store, and you can have any fancy goblet you want in there, a mug, a glass, a cup, anything you want. Stop digging. Come on, Hey, digger. hold on. Not Come so on. fast. Let's, let's not go. so fast. Hold on. You see those 11 colored rocks in front of you? Yes, I do. They're gorgeous, ain't they? They're really beautiful. I'm going to hand you another one. Would you put it with it, please? OK. OK, it's stacked. Now, will you get my Bible out the backpack behind you? Of course. And read Revelations 21, 18 through 20, please? And you'll see what I'm talking about. I can tell that you've been studying it. There's a little bit of dirt on it. Well, that's what it's for. That's my ro road map. Well, okay. 2118. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass, not dirty. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Like those? Mm -hmm. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third that gold and then the emerald and the fourth and the twelfth one was amethyst. These, wait a minute, Digger, the, the Bible's talking about the foundation of heaven. Do you exactly. Think? I've been digging for years, and I've never found this many rare stones in one place or in such a great variety before. They've never been in the same order that heaven's foundation was in. The Bible says no unforgiveness will be found in heaven. Just like there'll be beauty of those rocks, there'll be beauty like no unforgiveness when we get there. It's not so unusual around here. God led us to this cave. He teaches us about his word in here. Have you met Word Bird yet? If he had even seen or heard any of those rockets, we would have probably never met him. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some unusual sounds, seen some small footprints that I've never seen before. <whistles> Whoa, lavish! Did you drop a big bead in here and make this big hole? No, Word Bird, it's not my fault. 
It's Diggers. What a hole. He was the I one. can't I'm believe it. I wasn't even don't here. Don't you get dirty. He made this big I wasn't even here. Excuse me. 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 It's really Joseph's brother's fault. Huh? They threw him in a pit, but it's your fault we have a pit dug in our cave. Digger, this just isn't our cave. It's my home. Well, then, does that treasure chest belong to you? Well, really, the truth trunk belongs to all of us. I'm sure you've already tried to open it. Yeah, I sure did. There must have been a hidden locker at somewhere. I couldn't open it for the life of me. The truth trunk has a special lock on it. It never opens until we read the Word of God that appears on the Word window. Then would you read the Word window quickly while I keep digging? Oh, I'd love to. That's what I do best. Let's look at the Word window. Matthew 6, 15. If you forgive, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Miss Vicki, let's try the truth trunk again. Okay. Well, I'm going to get this dirty rock off of it first, word bird. <coughs> Nasty. Ugh. I got it open. It wasn't hard at all. What's in it? Oh, something hard. Something very hard. It looks like a rock. A, a rock shaped like a heart. You know, I think I read something about that, about... Like when we have sin in our heart or unforgiveness in our heart, our heart is as hard as a rock. Oh. But it also says that through Jesus and what he did on the cross for us, that God would take away the stony heart, I believe it said, and give us a heart of flesh, a heart that would be able to forgive and, and have the blood of Jesus and be able to forgive others like God forgave us through the blood of Jesus. And, and there's another rock in there. I think it's a very quiet rock, though. It's a very quiet rock. It's got a bandana across its mouth. A bandana? Huh? Ooh. I think that that means that if we don't praise God, that the rocks will cry out. I've read that, that the rocks would actually cry out. Well, I praise God. But I don't know what to think about this big hole in our cave. Now, now, Miss Vicky, I can forgive Digger for looking for a treasure. But you know, this hole sure is messing up my home. Ooh, it's my home too, Word Bird. A person's home should be their safe place, a place to find protection and love. Grandmother's leaves have a story for us. In this story, Grandmother was excited about going. It was time for the annual Big Rock Butterfly Picnic. Butterflies from all over the world came for this picnic. It was one huge family reunion. <laughs> Grandmother especially liked this place. It was called Big Rock Beach, and it was called that because of the miles of sparkling sand and the one huge personable rock right in the center of it. He was friendly and always watching to make sure the butterflies were safe. <laughs> Grandmother said her hellos to Big Rock, then lifted into the air to mix and mingle with some of her winged relatives. There was Tommy Two Toes and Little Lady Rosebud, and over there was Daisy Delight. Grandmother even met a new friend, an especially fast flyer by the name of Danny Dragonfly. <laughs> There was a big picnic and flying contest scheduled for the next day. All of the butterflies were signing up and getting ready. As Grandmother was watching the finish line being erected, she noticed that the sky was growing dark and the wind was blowing rather strong. It was getting hard for the butterflies to maneuver in the air. Then Grandmother heard Big Rock speaking. Everyone take cover, big storm coming. Come, take shelter in me. There's a safe place here in my side. <laughs> Grandmother and many of the butterflies flew straight over to Big Rock. He had been their protection so many times before. They hid in the crevice in his side. That night, the storm blew fierce winds that sent waves crashing against the rock shelter. 
It was very scary. In the morning, as the sound of the storm began to subside, they could hear Big Rock as he called out to them again. The storm is over. It's safe to come out now. Come up on my back and warm yourselves in the sun. <laughs> While Grandmother and her friends were warming themselves in the sun, a great commotion was heard from the far end of the beach. It was Danny Dragonfly and three of the young flyers following him. It seemed that Danny had talked these young flyers into outrunning the storm and waiting it out in the old shed on the other side of the beach. But because they were not as fast in flying as Danny was, they had damaged or broken wings and they were really mad. <laughs> Big Rock noticed what was happening and he called the young flyers and Danny over to his side. He helped Danny to understand that because his flying speed was so much greater than the butterflies, he would have to be careful about what he had asked them to do and where he would ask them to go. Danny had put his friends in danger by trying to outrun the storm. So from now on, he was going to have to think about what was best for them and not just himself. Then Big Rock talked to the young flyers, and he helped them to see how they were going to have to forgive Danny Dragonfly so that love could begin to flow through the family again and begin mending their wings. <laughs> Everyone agreed that Big Rock was right as they forgave Danny, and the love that they needed began to flow. The next day, everyone enjoyed the picnic and the contest, and the wings did mend. This was a great lesson among the butterflies. Why, did you notice, Miss Vicky, how Big Rock is like our Jesus? He's a rock of understanding and forgiveness. Only he can help us to understand others and to forgive them, and only he can supply us with enough love to mend our broken wings. Thank you for catching Lavish. Are you okay, Lavish? <laughs> oh, Digger, your arms move faster than my wings when I fly. And just to save our Lavish when those rockets surprised us. Digger, <laughs> I think it's time I put the word window scripture into action. It says, if I forgive, my heavenly Father will also forgive me. Matthew 6, 15. So, Digger, I forgive you. You were looking for a tre treasure and dug this big hole here. And you saved Lavish, and she's, she's a greater treasure than all of that. I know, Lavish, I know. You don't have to look at me like that, I know. Mm. It took an archaeologist to dig into my heart to find that I had unforgiveness. It was buried pretty deep, too. Digger, I forgive you, too. I may never find the goblet of forgiveness, but right now, my heart is like a cup filled with love for my newfound friends. And don't worry, tomorrow I'll come back and fill this hole and it'll be as good as new. You just take care of Lavish while I'm gone, see? Okay. okay. Bye. We will. Thank bye, you, Digger. Bye-bye. Bye, Digger. Bye, bye. bye, Digger. bye, bye Digger. Digger. See you later. Bye, Digger. Bye, Digger. Thanks. Oh, boy. Whew, this has been an exhausting day. A big old hole dug in our cave and learning about forgiveness. You mind if I sit down? Mm -mm. I think I'm going to sit down right here and just... Oh, take a break. Oh. 
Joseph was thrown into a big old pit, a hole in the ground. And his forgiveness must have started when he was in there. And today, an archaeologist, bediologist, uh, be, an archaeologist dug a big old hole in our cave. And through that hole in the ground, I learned about forgiveness. Miss Vicky. <sighs> Miss Vicky. You know, you know, Lavish, unforgiveness is as hard as a rock. Miss Vicky. Poor Lavish. She's so tired. I just know how she feels. We've had quite a day finding a hole, a huge hole, dug in the middle of our picnic spot behind the waterfall. Not to mention that she fell into the hole when those rockets jumped out with a wild song again. Phew, one thing I don't understand though, she didn't even get her new dress dirty. <laughs> what a good girl. What a glad mama when she sees that her dress is clean when she picks her up. I hope though when Lavish tells her mother all about the exciting things that happened to her today, that her mom won't think Lavish is just making it up because she's so clean. <laughs> Sleep well, my little beadyologist. <laughs> beadyologist. So many things happened today. So many feelings and emotions, and so many rocks, and so much dirt, and so much forgiveness. I've got a lot to write in my prayer diary today, and I'd better get started. Dear Prayer Diary, Today on the news report, Dan Bother asks, asks them. He, he, how's he say that? I never get it right. Ax them, yeah, because W-I-X-M. Well, anyway, he told me. I saw a waterfall, and then I saw a cave, and then a tree, and then a bird nest in the tree behind the waterfall, and then a blue feather in that nest in that tree behind that waterfall and finally a hole in the middle of the cave floor dug so deep that the dirt was piled up and it looked like a volcano in the middle of our picnic area well at first i was mad hurt and i couldn't believe that an archaeologist was ruining our fun place he was well looking for a really cool old treasure I was looking for a really cool new way to throw him out of the cave. <laughs> but he said he was searching and had been searching for three years for the Goblet of Forgiveness. The one Joseph had hidden his brother's grain sacks when he was sending them back to bring their younger brother Benjamin back to Joseph. Well, one brother was kept there with Joseph just to ensure that the other brothers would return. I remember how Lavish cried when I read her that Bible story. Lavish was adopted, and she didn't know anything about her birth family. She couldn't imagine having as many brothers as Joseph had. As young as she is, she never has felt unforgiveness for her birth family. They loved her enough, she said, and I believe it too, just to make sure that she had a wonderful home the kind of home with the love of God surrounding her. That's real love. She and Joseph must have a special place in their hearts that helps them forgive others, even in the worst of, even in the pits. Well, Jesus, will you please help me to dig deep in my heart like an archaeologist and find that kind of forgiveness? No one has ever or will ever hurt me like my sin hurt you. When you were on the cross for me, some of your last words were, Father, forgive them. That includes everybody. You have forgiven us. Okay, diary, here's some things I learned today. Number one, God forgives us. Number two, our hearts will be as hard as a rock if we don't forgive others. Number three, we must forgive others. Number four, when we choose to forgive, then Jesus gives us his power to forgive. Number five, there will be no unforgiveness allowed in heaven. Father, the place Jesus is preparing for us has 12 beautiful stone foundations. 
and I thank you for letting me see the colors of the floor in heaven today. But most of all, I thank you for showing me that through forgiveness, I can live there. Forgiveness is so powerful. And unforgiveness is like having a heavy, ugly rock just sitting right on your heart. Oops, diary. Unforgiveness is like having a rock for a heart. Help me to be forgiving like you and like Joseph and like Lavish. Father, also bless Digger and, and help him as he fills in the hole in the cave floor. I'm going to take him a surprise picnic lunch tomorrow. Um, put a little bit of rock candy in the basket. <laughs> rock candy. <laughs> no. Where is that rock Lavish brought home for her rock collection? Now, oh, here it is. This is the one she did not hit her head on when Digger caught her. Well, I've been able to forgive those wild rockets for their surprise song today that sent Lavish tumbling down into the hole. That must be Lavish's mama coming here to pick her up. I'm sure thankful she didn't get hurt today. And I'm sure thankful that she didn't get her new dress dirty. <laughs> <laughs>